Welcome everyone at our weekly co colloquium. Uh, our speaker today is uh, Marcin Nawiorkowski. So Marcin did his uh, PhD <coughs> in 2014 uh, at the Faculty of Physics. Then uh, for the next two years, he was uh, a postdoc at the Institute of Science and Technology in Vienna. And uh, in 2016, he came back to Poland, to Warsaw, and he's currently an assistant professor at the Faculty of Physics, the University of Warsaw. And uh, today, Marcin will tell us about mathematics of Bose-Einstein condensations, condensation, uh, recent advances and open problems. So Marcin is an expert in uh, many body physics. So I hope we will hear something very interesting. So Marcin, the screen is yours. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the invitation and uh, for the very kind introduction. So uh, I don't know whether I'm an expert in many body quantum mechanics. I know some aspects of the mathematical problems with, uh, related to many body quantum mechanics, especially on the boson side. This is the, the part that I'm working on. And uh, so uh, I chose this topic uh, to speak about here uh, because I know there are lots of people at uh, CFT who work on bosons. And I thought that maybe uh, this overview talk would give you some you know picture of what mathematicians do on the I would say on the other side in, in, of this of the same field in the end okay so so there will be no proofs in my talk but there will be some statements and uh, some some theorems will be state theorem in the sense of theorems and you will see how those theorems that uh, that we are trying to prove look in generally and maybe you'll see some connections with what you are doing, okay? So we are actually doing much simpler things, but okay, let me start. So, so, so as you all know here, and probably had many, many dozens and hundreds of talks about Bose-Einstein condensation in your in your in your um, uh, in your center. Uh, but let me just give the very brief introduction. So, 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 in 1995, uh, Bose-Einstein condensation was observed in experiments for the first time. So these were the, uh, the two famous experiments are those by Cornell, Biman, and Ketterle, for which they got the Nobel Prize in 2001. And uh, well, what is BEC? So very heuristically speaking, BEC is a, is a state of matter in, at low temperatures where uh, many bosons occupy a common quantum state. So, so, so at, at this picture, which is from those experiments, uh, was a graphical representation of those experiments, we see that this is a picture of the cloud of bosons and the, the distributions uh, of their momenta. And we go with, with higher, we have higher temperatures on the left side. And then we see like a cloud, which is more or less Maxwellian. And then on the right hand side, when we lower the temperature, we see that most bosons occupy, so are peaked around zero momentum. And this means that they occupy this low energy state altogether uh, because they almost don't move. Okay, and also uh, Bose-Einstein condensation is interesting because of many issues, but you know, it's also believed that it's related to superfluidity. Um, uh, there are also other macroscopic quantum effects that are related to BEC, like the quantization of vortices, et cetera, et cetera. So, 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 uh, so while the, uh, the so the, the basically the, the, the heuristics of those of this picture, I mean, this picture has been derived already by Bose and Einstein in the 20s, so almost 100 years ago, uh, for a non-interacting gas. And for a non-interacting gas, they, 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 they derived a famous formula which says, okay, how many particles will occupy the zero momentum mode in relation to the, num the whole number, the number of all particles. And they derive this typical critical temperature. There is a formula of the, for the critical temperature uh, when, when, when this macroscopic occupation starts to appear. Um, so, so, so usually in these experiments, now, I mean, these experiments, uh, the dimension uh, of Cornell, Human, and Ketterle, it involves many particles. So, so the number of, of particles in that experiment was of the order 10 to the fifth. And the temperatures at which uh, BC appears is nano Kelvin, let's say. So, 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 so what is actually the goal of, the, of what I'm doing and uh, I would say fellow mathematicians? So we are trying to rigorously understand what Bose-Einstein condensation is and whether it appears rigorously. It, uh, by that, I mean in terms of, in, in forms of theorems, mathematical theorems, 
and especially for interacting systems. Okay, I mean the, the, that's the whole point. So we want to consider interacting systems of bosons. Uh, so in base, so you you could say we want to understand this picture that is in, uh, on this on this photo for interacting system in terms of of tubes. Okay, so 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 so, so since we want to understand Bose-Einstein condensation from a from a, a rigorous perspective, so let me just mention how we really define Bose-Einstein condensation, and and this definition goes back to Penrose and Onzaga, because of course when you have a, a non-interacting system that it's then we know that for non-interacting systems the, the the wave function of the ground state wave function of the non-interacting system is a product state let's say at zero temperature so we know explicitly what it means that all particles occupy the same single particle state but of course when 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 when, inter, when interaction is introduced then uh, product state are no more eigenstates of an interacting system okay so so we have to define what uh, Bose Einstein, uh, what we understand under under this this vague statement that most particles occupy a common quantum state. So 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 to this end, we introduced the one body reduced density matrix. So we have a we have psi n. Psi n is the wave function of an n body quantum system. The Hamiltonian would, that I'm working with will be defined later. And for this, uh, oh, sorry. So for this, for this quantum state, we introduce uh, uh, the one-body reduced density matrix, which is basically the a one-body operator. So this is an operator which acts on the one-body Hilbert space, H, and it's uh, it's the projection onto the n-body wave function with the traced out all n minus one degrees of freedom, basically. Okay. So if you if you look at it from an integral representation. Then it's exactly like the, this expression, the first line. So you take psi psi bar, and then you uh, the, this this tracing out is just the uh, integration over uh, over x two up to x n, and now the 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 thing that is uh, left over is a, is a, is a is a is a is a is a kernel which depends on the variables x and y. Okay, so this is the integral kernel of the reduced one body density matrix, and uh, and we say that there is BEC in the state psi n. So we say, and this is the definition which goes back to the ideas of Penrose and Onzager. I think it was in 56 or whatever. I'm sorry for that. I don't remember exactly. Uh, that if uh, in the limit when n goes to infinity, so this, there is some kind of microscopic limit involved in this in this in this in this setup. I'll speak about limits a bit more later. Okay, so this is just for the definition that. Okay, you, you could think that 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 all, uh, this one body reduced density matrix is almost like n times a projection onto onto one single state. Okay, so here phi is just a is a function, is a one body function, it's an L2 of R3, let's say. Okay, so one body wave function. So this is uh, so so where, where does this come from? So basically, so, so uh, what are the heuristics behind this definition? So for this, to, to this end, let us consider a non-interacting gas on a torus. Okay, so we take a box with periodic boundary conditions, and we just take the Hamiltonian, which is the minus Laplacian for each particle. So, so just the, the kinetic energy, no interaction, and then it's uh, it's clear that the ground state is a product state. So here, the product state is u tensor n, which is just the multiplication of u with different variables. Okay, from x1 to xn. So this is a symmetric state, it's a perfect bosonic state. And uh, well, actually, if you are really in the box, then it's just a constant wave function, yeah, because uh, and then you have just to normalize it with the size of the box. Okay. And then you, it's an easy computation that if you if you if you look for the reduced density matrix corresponding to this product state, then you see it's just exactly n times the projection on the state u0. Okay. And uh, now, if you now I want to make connection with the picture that we saw on the first page. So if you now look at the momentum of the kernel of this of this reduced density matrix in the momentum space, well then basically you see n times a delta uh, form delta which sits in, uh, in in zero. Yeah. So this is somehow how you heuristically can easily reproduce the picture from the first slide. Can I ask for something? Yes. Yes. I mean, I understand you mentioned that you view this problem from the mathematical point of view, but yeah. 
would it make any harm to define Hamiltonian as the kinetic energy and not 2m times kinetic energy on this uh, slide? Sorry, so of course I could uh, see. Yeah, sorry, so uh, so you would uh, you would like me to introduce h divided by two m, yeah, h bar divided by 2m. yeah. I, well, or sorry, just so, so this is okay. So I have to immediately assume that very... h uh, is 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 so, uh, set to one. As so I should immediately the, say that everywhere I will set h equal h bar equal to one and m to one half. So two m is one, h bar is one. I'm very sorry for that, but this is uh, uh, this will be ha happening all around. Sorry for that. I should have made. I mean, this will not. This would, of course, not change anything in our analysis. Nothing. Yeah. So. Yeah, um, sure, I understand. But there are many instances where mathematical perspective differs from yes. the perspective of theoretical physicists. But this is not the case here. No. So and this is not the case. So, the so, so in particular, I will not look at any kind of uh, classical limits. Okay. So I will not be taking limits with h bar going to zero or anything like that. No. So in that, so this is why I don't keep track of the of the of the Planck constant. So Martin, can I ask, uh, yeah. like, why you choose uh, convergence in trace norm? I mean, uh, like, my question is actually motivated somehow by physics, because like this convergence in trace norm is kind of quite stringent, and like experimentally speaking, I, I guess people just look on on those setups from very the just measure the very particular observables. Yeah. So, right? so, 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 why? Yeah. Okay. So, one thing is, so, so that's a good, so it's a good point, and I'll maybe come also to that later. But for, at this moment, I would like to say because each one body observable, I don't know, one body observable can be written as a trace of the observable times the one body reduced density matrix. Okay, so this basically this trace norm convergence, which actually I didn't say, but you said that, is that uh, uh, that you can compute each one body reduced density, each one body observable, you can compute using this effective uh, projection onto phi. Okay, so that so this is like actually I should have explained that immediately. Yeah, so this is why I so, but I so. Uh, since we are speaking about finite rank operators, then actually it turns out that trace norm and, and norm operator norm is equivalent in this setup. But uh, the trace norm is very actually it's uh, very physical in the sense that this just if you have a trace norm conversion, then you can immediately see okay, so I compute an one body observable in a one body reduced density matrix gamma psi n. I don't know gamma psi n explicitly because it's a very complicated problem, but I can say, okay, but then I know that in the limit when n goes to infinity, I can compute this one body observable using this projection onto phi just, which I can, I hope to be able to compute in a different way. And I'll come to that in a, in a second. Okay. Thanks. Okay. And maybe Thanks one more remark. Yeah? Maybe yeah. one more remark. So far, you are not uh, letting temperature be different than zero it's a okay zero so this is actually a very good point and uh, i wanted to say that also later so uh, the results i will mention today are only about zero temperature so these are about ground state bc let's say uh of, i'll mention that as an open problem that actually so things about positive temperatures there have been some recent developments but i didn't want to talk about that uh, today of course yes yeah, today i'll be focused on t equal zero uh, scenario okay thanks Okay, so, uh, okay, and then of course, so we want to study a many body uh, system. So we, we introduced the many body Hamiltonian. So basically, this is, I write a very general form of the Hamiltonian. Okay, so, so non relativistic many body Schrodinger Hamiltonian. Uh, so it has, a, it has a part which is the one body, I would say, operator. Yeah, so it has a kinetic operator, and then we have an ex, there might be an external potential. Which, for example, describes trapping of the system. Yeah, so we can think of V being I don't know, like harmonic trap or whatever. Then we have a second term. So this is the double sum. And the double sum of, describes the interaction because I will restrict myself to two body interactions. But in principle, you could also add three body interactions. You could, there are there are papers actually uh, which also consider three body interactions. And then, and a priori W is some profile of the two body interaction, I write WN because it can be also made N dependent. Okay, and this will be done in a second. I'll do it on the next slide. So that's why I have an index N. 
And also I introduce a coupling constant. I introduce a coupling constant lambda n. Um, and actually from now on, I immediately say that the coupling constant will be of order one over n. So, so very heuristically speaking, uh, it's because of the following situation. So I will consider a limit when n goes to infinity. Okay, so 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 I will so 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 the mathematical limit I will consider is the large number of particles limit. So n will be tend to infinity, and if you see that the the one body, the kinetic part of the system is n independent and it has n terms. So you could think that the kinetic energy of the system is of order n. That's very heuristically. While the two body uh, two body part, of course, there are n times n minus one over two pairs that interact. And if you think of, if you would say that W is also an independent, then this would be, the whole interaction would be a term of, N, of order N squared in N. Yeah, and of course, in the limit when N goes to infinity, this would dominate the system. That's why we immediately introduce a lambda one over N scaling, which makes both terms of order N heuristically. And that, but, gives, that, that, but that is really contrary to what is important for experimenters, because no. in the experiment, they have a fixed, uh, of course, a value of the coupling, and they often change the number, total number of particles. So this n square scaling of interaction energy actually is very physical and very important. Yeah. Okay. But so so okay. Uh, so uh, okay. I'll I'll come maybe back to that. There are there because I'll also make W n uh, uh, n dependent, and I'll mention of three regimes that actually. Some of them are quite physically relevant. One of the gross mm -hmm. regime. I'll come to that in a second, maybe. You okay. Can, you can comment on that a bit later. Okay. So, okay. so, so. Sorry, one comment, yeah. because I think that this is related to thermodynamic limit. Is yes? that if usually physicists like to have thermodynamic limit and then the volume goes to infinity, but actually it should be equivalent, keeping the same density, but it should be equivalent to keeping. Uh, constant volume, but the interaction strength going like one over n. So no, in this case, the really physical way of going to the thermodynamic limit is to flatten the uh, the potential uh, of a trapping potential. Trapping uh, potential. No, but if you have a harmonic be... trap, then you just send omega to zero, and then n to infinity, and then keeping physical constant value of the coupling uh, is fine, and it allows yes. to define the. Okay, so, so 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 actually, so I'll mention this limit that you just mentioned about omega times n being fixed. Uh, I'll I'll mention. No, that. it's not omega times n because it depends on dimension, on dimensionality. Okay. Yeah. Okay, but this kind it's, of limit. It's it's n times omega to the cube in three D. Uh, okay, I'll come to that a, a bit later. Okay, so 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 so, so I will just okay. Okay, so so first of all, actually, what we mean by thermodynamic. So I, I can I can assure you that one of the limits that we, in this setup will be very physical. Okay. Okay. And I, I will see that in the, in the, in a while. And actually, the question about the thermodynamic limit is also perfectly valid. Uh, and uh, I also say a few words about that in the open problem thing. Okay, because it's actually uh, the, taking the proper thermodynamic limit and proving BC in that is an open problem. But let me just state the result. Okay, so 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 as I said already, that so if this is a for this being a very general Hamiltonian, so so of course we know that, that there's the curse of dimensionality and that there are no analytic solutions to that problem when n is large, and also the computational complexity of that problem grows them dramatically. And so physicists rely on approximation approximate uh, approximations and they derive many effective theories that allow them to 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 to, to to deal with the many body problem, okay? Compute physical quantities from those effective series. And, and in my talk, I would like how to show how to how we derive, how we justify some of those effective series, one of them being gross pitayevsky and the another one being Bogolibov's theory. Okay. So 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 uh, so let me go back to the scaling of the interaction. Okay. So so the 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 scaling that we put in the interaction this wn is the following so for a, for a given function w think of that being a nice smooth positive interaction so repulsive interactions 
we introduce a scaling parameter beta. Okay, and this scaling parameter uh, goes inside W and it somehow sa says what's the effective range of the interaction. Because you see, if W is, an, is a fixed function, let's say even of compact support, then this multiplying the, the X by N to the beta tells us that the effective range of the, of the, of the, of the interaction well, it's it's n to the minus beta. So, so your your uh, interaction potential the, the is is pure, purely repulsive, yes. Yeah. So at this point, today, I assume it's. So of course, this is not uh, what atoms really do when they interact. Yes, but uh, uh, okay, but uh, I agree. But just for the sake of the presentation, I assume it's positive. So I'll okay. just, so, so 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 there are mathematical problems when there. Are, there are results also about attractive, about potential, general potentials. Okay, so okay. so but, but I don't want to be so I want to make some statements which are, which are precise later for which we know theorems, and I don't want to specify the 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 the, the precise assumptions on the interaction. Then okay, yeah. although each of okay. those statements usually goes with an assumption. So just for the general presentation, I want to stick to repulsive interactions. Okay, okay. can I make a just a comment. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, it looks to me that this setup you are discussing now is something which in a classical physics is called a grad limit. It's a description of the interacting particle systems in a particular li ri limit, uh, the equation of motion for that system, Louisville equation, gets into a Boltzmann equation. Yes. Which is so not that equation. So, this is like, am I understanding it correctly that in that limit you will find out that the equations of motion for that particular Hamiltonian in the limit, thermodynamic limit, in some sense, they will reduce to the gross Kitaisky equation. Exactly. Which, yeah, is, exactly. Non, which is nonlinear equations. Yes. Similar yes. Like a Boltzmann yes. equation is nonlinear yes. equation in the yes. in a classical physics. Yes. Uh, so okay, I, I'm trying to put it up. Yes. In, exactly. So, so if, 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 I if, understand. Yes. Of, yes. So if you know the Grad limit in the derivation of the Boltzmann equation, so exactly this is what people. So these are famous results by Oscar Lamford, where, where he proved uh, the derivation uh, 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 okay. of the Boltzmann equation. So, yeah. so, so I would say that the, the picture is the same. Uh, so he was there, he, he took the microscope, cross microscopic uh, equations, I mean, which the, were- The range of interaction gets smaller, but the, but, yes. but we, yes. but the number of particles, so to say, is large and this mean yes. part in some sense is constant. Yes. Right. Yes, exactly. So this is the somehow this is the so this is the same idea. We want to derive effective nonlinear equations starting from a microscopic picture. Exactly. And this is on we only know how to do it in certain regimes. Okay. And this so, sure. so the, and this is how we set up our, our scalings to, to, to see something. But my point is that actually so so, so uh, there is actually one regime which is how we can derive really the gross Pitayevsky equation. So let me just say one one more thing. So 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 when when we when you take beta in this in the scaling of W n to be smaller than one over d, and where d is a dimension, then you can say that the range of interaction is much larger than the average distance between the particles because the average distance of between the particles is like n to the minus one over d. Okay, because you, we we have well, we have volume one, let's say, we have fixed volume, which is set by the trapping. So this is exactly, so this is not a thermodynamic limit. Yeah, let's be clear. This is not a thermodynamic limit, but in this setup, it's a, it's a, we have a volume of size one, and then we have n to the minus one over D is the average distance between the particles. And if the range of the interaction is much larger than that, then we usually say that, well, we have uh, many collisions between the particles, but they are in some sense weak, and they are weak because there is an n to the db in the scaling on the w and in front of the w only. And if b is small, then in some sense this you know the, this it becomes smaller than if b is larger. That's the, um, that's the heuristics behind it. Okay. Now, when 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 beta is becoming larger, then then the range of interact of the of the interaction of the scale interaction is much smaller. 
than the average distance between the particles. And there are much, le much less, but much stronger collisions, I would so heuristically see. Okay. The point is that short range correlations occur in, that, in such systems, and they're actually much harder to capture mathematically. Okay. And in, for mathematical, uh, for, for the mathematical analysis, the larger the beta is, the more difficult the problem is. Now, a very characteristic, uh, so there are very hard, two, hard, two, two characteristic values of beta. One is beta equals zero, so you don't scale the interaction. And this is the so-called Hartree scaling. Uh, while uh, in, for beta equal one, in D equals three, and this is crucial here, in D equals three, when you take beta equal one, then it's what corresponds to the gross pitayeski scaling. And this is uh, this will be seen in the results I will present in a second, because then the, the 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 scattering length, the physical scattering length, appears in the in the description of the effective motion. Okay, so we know that in the gross pitayeski equation, the scattering length is the parameter that appears in front of the nonlinear terms, yeah, or pi a. Now to see that. Uh, we need, this is the right scaling to see that in the effective equations. Now, so, so you know very well what the scattering lengths, so the way we define the scattering lengths um, to put our hands on it is that we define it through the zero energy scattering equation. So this is the two body problem in the, in the, in the relative variables. And uh, well, when you write it out, it's the zero energy scattering equation. So you have a zero on the right hand side. So W is the unscaled interaction. And then, well, we know that there is, there is an asymptotic solution to this, to, this, to, this, to this equation of the form one minus A divided by X. This is in three dimensions plus errors. And now this A that appears on, uh, in, in, this, in, this, in this term A over X, is, this is what we call the scattering, equation, the scattering length. So this is actually universal. If you would take a uh, if you would take a hardball uh, interaction, then you would see that the radius that a is the radius of the ball, hard sphere interaction. Sorry. Okay, so this is this is what what I wanted to say about the uh, scaling. And now, okay, so what are the quantities of interest that we want to to understand in our setup? So of course it's the ground state energy. So we want to look at the infimum of the spectrum. So if you would be able, so there's already some work in that direction, we'll also look at the free energy asymptotics. Okay, so what happens so when n is large and when t is smaller, say, or whatever. Then there is a typical question that we, that, we, that we ask is whether there is an effective description of the quantum dynamics. Okay, so you have a many body state, uh, given initial state, which is, let's say, which, is, which exhibits both Einstein condensation, and then, uh, you evolve it with the full interacting many body uh, uh, Schrodinger Hamiltonian, and you act whether there's an effective description of the time evolved many body wave function. And of course, there is also the excitation spectrum. So you want to look, investigate the eigenvalues that are above the ground state. So this is related to Bogolyubov's theory. Okay, so let me just say very quickly so what happens when you have Hartree theory? Uh, so when you have Hartree theory, then if you want to analyze the ground state energy, then you introduce a trial state and you assume that the trial state is a product state. And this gives you an upper bound on the, on the ground state energy just by the variational principle. So, so taking as a trial state, a product state, now for some u, which we don't know, yeah. sorry, leads to a, leads to a nonlinear functional. And this is what is called the Hartree functional. And the Hartree functional has, well, it has a kinetic energy, it has a potential energy, and then it also has the, the interaction energy, which in this case of a general uh, interaction, two body interaction WN, is, you see, it's, it's a convolution of the interaction with the, with, let's say, with the effective density U squared. And, and a priori, we don't, see, we don't see here a delta function yet. Okay, so if you would take a delta function here, then you would see the gross pitayeski in some sense. 
and this is the Hartree Hartree functional. And then you can minimize the Hartree functional. This is a, this is a one-body problem now, but a nonlinear one. And you, in this way, you derive an upper bound for the ground state energy. You note know that the ground state energy is smaller or equal than uh, the infimum of this functional over all one-body functions, okay? because you chose u to be a one-body function. So usually the upper bounds are simpler because you have trial, you have the variational principle. Uh, what is more difficult is to derive lower bounds. Okay. And then it turns out that as long as in that scaling that I would discuss before, beta is smaller than one, let us, uh, let us now fix uh, three dimensions, okay? So as long as beta is smaller than one, it turns out that it is true that actually, okay, so here is, sorry, a misprint, because there should be no n in here, that, that when n goes to infinity, it is true that the, the, the ground state energy is well described by this Hartree function. Okay, but now if you take the limit when n goes to infinity in this Hartree functional, then so this is something that you learn in, uh, in analysis, let's say, you know, functional analysis course about distributions, then you see that a fact, so wn is a nice integrable function which, whose support converges to zero, but whose size is always equal one. This is the way we define wn. So this convergence as a measure, and I go back to slides here, here to this, this picture, this converges somehow in terms of distributions to a delta function, okay? But now the, 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 the size which appears in front of the delta interaction is just the integral of the, of the w, okay? So if w is normalized and it's just get a delta at zero. And we know, we know, I mean, we know from physics that this is not that we want to obtain. I mean, the gross pitayevsky equation has a four pi a in front of the delta, yeah? And this is exactly how the gross pitayevsky scaling appears. So the, the theorem is that as long as beta is smaller than one, then we see here the, the effective functional has here, has no scattering lens here, okay? So it is crucial to, 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 to in fact, it turns out that the right gross pitayevsky scaling is the one when beta is equal to one. And then you see that your effective theory is given by the gross pitayevsky functional. So the gross pitayevsky functional is the one where it has the same part for the kinetic and potential energy, but in the two body, inter the, the, some of the interaction energy is now goes with a four pi A, where A is the scattering length. Yeah, this is an expression that you very, know very well, that very many of you probably also start the computations with that, with that equation. Uh, and now really the A is the proper scattering length. That I Can I make a comment? Yes. Isn't that again very similar to what is called the Katz hammer Uhlenbeck analysis of the Van der Waals gas, where you where you can prove that for a particular region, limit, which is very similar, but in a classical way, that the, the range cuts, of, the cuts limit, yeah, yeah, the cuts limit, the cuts, the, I mean the cuts. Well, actually, there were three names with it: Katz hammer and Uhlenbeck. That this is precisely. And that you get the free energy, which is the free energy of the of the Van der Waals gas. Yeah, I mean, the, I mean, this is the, the <clears throat> this is the the idea is the same. Yeah, I would say. I mean, we want to find okay. a certain limit so in that, which you can. This is beautiful that it is raising <clears throat> this classical analysis to the quantum limit. That's really something remarkable. Yeah. So, so, but really, what is really somehow I would say it's really subtle here in this in this in taking those limits is that really. You only see the scattering lengths appearing yes. in your in your effective theory if you really do the scaling with beta equal one. If you don't, if you take a different beta, your yes. effective limiting theory will not give you the scattering lengths. It only gives you an integral of the interaction in front of that. Yeah, but that is precisely what is in the Katz limit, if you want. That's the limit okay. of the potential. Okay, yeah. So, so, so uh, I integral, integral of the potential. In, yeah, exactly. So, so the Katz limit gives uh, you. Sorry. So exactly. So, so, so this, so this is actually why the Katz limit, in that sense, the Katz limit, I would say, corresponds more to the, to the, to the beta smaller equal one scaling, while really the beta equal one is really the gross pitay, what we call the gross pitayevsky scaling, because it really produces the scattering lengths in the effective theory. And you see, if you also, to, and actually this is an important correction because you know, it's an, in the end for the ground state energy, it's an order and correction, yeah? I mean, it's, 
because the difference between the term which has an integral of v here and the scattering lengths so they are they are not equal yeah and this can be seen from the born series i mean from the born series you have the the different you know an equivalent description of the a of the scattering lengths is just the integral of the solution of the scattering equation times the times the two body interaction which when you then expand in the born series you see that this gives you only the integral of the interaction to leading order okay but there is a correction to that and really to capture this correction you have to take beta equal one Okay, and then there is a there is a theorem which tells you that uh, okay, you can also solve this variational problem with the gross pitaisky functional, and it has a unique minimizer which solves the nonlinear gross pitaisky equation. Okay, so the theorem is that when you take the the uh, maybe I, I didn't write it explicitly here, but the theorem is that okay, they'll be seen in the next slide that uh, when you take the gross pitaisky in the scaling when beta is equal to one. You reproduce that the ground state energy is to leading order equal to the one described by the gross pitaisky functional. Now, uh, so, so, so actually, this, this theorem has been for the first time proven uh, 22 uh, almost years now ago by Lieb, Zeiringer, and Invason. And then, of course, uh, uh, you can, they only, only, I mean, it's not the right thing. So actually, they, the way they proved their theorem was more in the setup that they take, took a general trap. They considered this this the this limit where uh, which Professor uh, Jonzeski described. So they 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 coupled the 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 the, 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 uh, the omega which describes the harmonic trap with the n, and they considered the limit when when both are I mean their product is fixed when n goes to infinity. Okay. And in that limit, they, which is also the gross pitaisky limit, they reproduce they produce this result. Now, what I wanted to say here is that uh, well, once again, uh, if it is done in three dimension, it is not omega times n, but omega cube times okay. n. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> so they showed that now, if you look at this picture, they, they showed that e n divided by n when n goes to infinity is equal to e g p. But their correction to that was uh, well, well, in general, it was n dependent. Okay. Now, now uh, later it was uh, this was also proven in a, in a different setup uh, that there is also BEC. So they were also able to prove two years later, Leap and Zeiringer, that actually there is BEC on the gross pitaisky minimizer. So, so coming back, so this result that I wrote out here. <coughs> uh, so PI is the projection onto the gross pitaisky minimizer okay and what i wrote here is nothing else than the proof that the one body reduced density matrix of psi n converges in trace norm to n times the gross pitaisky the projection to the gross pitaisky state okay so this was the the, the, the proof of e so this was the first mathematical proof of was einstein condensation uh, and it was proven in 2002 at zero temperature in this peculiar limit, which we cross the gross pitaisky limit. <coughs> Sorry. And then there were also some other results on that. And uh, recently, more recently, two years, you know, now almost two years ago, uh, we somehow improved this result together with my collaborators from Munich, where we actually showed that there is BEC in the gross pitaisky uh, setup up to optimal scale. So you see the point is that here they, the, 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 the correction in those previous results, the corrections to both the, gross, the condensation and the corrections to the ground state energy were of little order, little low of n when n was large. So we actually prove that those corrections are, for, are of order one in n. So they are n independent. Now, you could ask yourself the question, why is that important at all? Well, this is important if you want to go beyond the ground state energy. If you want to understand, if you want to understand the, the excitations about the ground state, so you better understand the ground state itself well. Okay. So actually, in order, because the next big goal in that field was to somehow prove the validity of Bogolyubov's theory in some sense. Okay. So Bogolyubov's theory is a is a is an effective theory which allows you to describe excitations about the ground state. And to that, you need to know the ground state quite precisely. 
So uh, the result that I mentioned before, and just, just, just the last one that we that we did, um, has been earlier proven by a group from Zurich, uh, the group of uh, Benjamin Schlein, where they considered a simpler situation when the system was translation invariant. So the so there was no external trapping. So th they considered the system in the in the in the box of size one. Uh, and no uh, uh, and periodic boundary conditions. Okay, so then in that in this setup, your gross Pitayevsky minimizer is just a constant function. It turns out you can prove that. Uh, and then they they were able to produce that the ground state E n in that when the n goes to infinity in the gross Pitayevsky image. So in the scaling when beta is equal to one, has this four pi four pi a n that you would expect from gross Pitayevsky theory. But then they were able to precisely compute the correction to this uh, order one correction to this expression. And this is the exactly the some of the one that has been predicted. This correction has been predicted by Bogolubov. Uh, here are terms which come from the fact that they that you they you they have finite size system. And this is uh, well, uh, this was a big thing. And this actually, this formula is also closely related to a different well-known formula for physics, which is called the Lee Kuan Kang formula. And the, in the Lee Kuan Kang formula, you really consider the thermodynamic limit. Okay, so in the Lee Kuan Kang formula, you consider the Hamiltonian that I mentioned before, but you take a system in the box of size L with periodic boundary conditions, no external pot trapping potential. And then you take the limit when L, the volume of the system goes to infinity, the number of particles goes to infinity, but the density is fixed, the N over one. And then uh, uh, Yi Huang and Yang, they predicted that the ground state energy in the dilute limit in the thermodynamic, uh, in, in the dilute thermodynamic limit, so diluteness conditions mean that rho A cubed is small here. So they assume that rho A cubed is very small. They proved this two term expansion uh, for the ground state energy density. Okay, so this is four pi a rho. This is exactly the four pi a n there. But now we have, we divide everything by the volume, basically. So you get a four pi a rho, and then there is a famous correction that involves the square root of rho a cubed. Okay, so this is a computation that has been done by Li Huang and Yang. I think that was um, fifty seven, whatever, maybe. Yes. And uh, that was actually an open problem to prove that for 60 years. So, uh, so there were results by Dyson on that and Lip and Ingvason. Then those two, Dyson and Lip and Ingvason, were able to prove this first order term, those four pi a row. And actually, after Dyson proved that, sorry, in uh, 1957, so he was able to get the upper bound quite quickly. Then it took many, many years to prove the lower bound for this four pi a row. And this was done by Lippe and Ingvason in 98. And basically, since then, the, the study of many of the mathematical study of many boson systems really started to grow again because they invented that method that people try, started to use and they developed that, etc. So there was a big, so the last 20 years was really a very, uh, I would say, fruitful uh, uh, period in, in the mathematical study of many boson systems. Okay, so let me just say that the Lee Huang Kang formula has been finally proven last year or two years ago by Fournay and Solovey. And <clears throat> actually Solovey will speak at the International Congress of Mathematicians next year about that. Uh, uh, because they were able to prove the lower bound in, in, in this in this setup. So again, the upper bound is usually slightly simple because you have to precisely choose a good trial state. And this had been done 10 years ago by, by uh, two people from Harvard. Okay, so 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 uh, so 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 this is so I mentioned Bogolyubov's theory. So so uh, as you maybe know that uh, E n uh, so the so the Bogolyubov theory not only predicts the order one correction to the ground state energy, but it also predicts the spectrum, the excitation spectrum of the system. And very recently, without going into the details, this has been uh, very recently last this year proven independently by two groups. One is the 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 the, the um, the Zurich group, the second one is the Munich group, where they actually proved Bogolyubov's theory for a trapped system, so for a system where, where there is no translation invariance uh, in the Gross-Pitayevsky scaling. 
Okay, so for this Hamiltonian that we had in the beginning, when beta is equal to one and there's some trapping potential V, for general repulsive interactions, they prove that Bogolyubov's theory is correct, so that you can describe the structure of the excitation spectrum. So the structure of eigenvalues which are above the above the ground state, and that they are described by you know this 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 Bogolyubov energies EI in the general trapping trap set setup. Those EIs have to be determined from an effective Bogolyubov Hamiltonian, which is uh, which is slightly more complicated, but in the case, it is well known how this EI looks. Uh, in Bogolyubov theory, EI would be just EP, P would be the momentum, and that would be the square root of P to the fourth plus two V hat of zero P squared, things like that, right? W hat is. So the famous Bogolyubov dispersion relation. So, so, so proving without going- That's in the box, of course. In the box, yeah. So that, that so when there's, yeah, but, but actually this has been proven now the same thing has been proven for general trapped system. So when you don't have a box with periodic boundary conditions, but you have a general trapped system. But uh, then you have to solve this Bogolub of Dejen equations. That's true, but this, but you, you it's still the, so 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 of course this is a, but this is a, a, this is a, this is solvable. I would say because sure, it's sure. a quadratic theory. Yeah, the, the point is that yes, yes, a, yes. Yeah, yeah, this is solvable. But so we, we, we showed that the effective theory, which is, as you said, now the Bogolyubov of Dejan in general setup theory, it's solvable because it's a, it's a, you reduce it to a quadratic Hamiltonian, and uh, but you are somehow done with the whole full many body problem. Yeah? So in that mm -hmm. Okay, and as I, as I mentioned, so, so actually this earlier, this has been done two years earlier for the translation variance system, and there have been also many results on that in the, in the, in the mini field regime. Uh, that I that I that I you know, I also did something on that. So. Okay, so st I still have ten minutes. Yes, so let me mention an open problem. So 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 proving BEC in the thermodynamic limit is still an open problem. So 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 what is the, what is the setup? So in general, we take a Gibbs state. Okay, so now we can even speak about positive temperature. But in fact, this is also an open problem in, at zero temperature. Okay. So you take the Gibbs state of your n-body Hamiltonian, you put your system with Hn defined as before, let's say, in any actually in actually in any in any limit, not only Grospitayevsky, also Hartree limit. This has not been done yet. You put it on the on the box with periodic boundary condition size L, and then you you compute for a fixed L and a fixed N. You compute you you you, you find the one body reduced density matrix which corresponds to this Gibbs state, and then you want to prove that asymptotically when L and N are very big in the in the thermodynamic limit when N divided by L cubed is the density which is fixed, but N both and then L go to infinity. You want to prove that this holds. So this is the the conjecture. That this is true, and this conjecture is BEC in the thermodynamic limit, basically. So this is an open problem even at zero temperature. So all these, all, uh, so 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 in this in our community, so there is we really the, the distinction between the gross Pitayevsky scaling and the thermodynamic limit is very important. So we usually tend to say that the gross Pitayevsky limit really describes. Um, well, we hope it, it describes experiments with cold atoms. Really, they, you know, we have strong short-range interactions, uh, and you see the Gross-Pitayevsky theory uh, appearing as the effective theory. While the thermodynamic limit, you would hope to describe maybe some kind of, you know, superfluid or something like that. So this is a different setup. So you don't scale the interaction; it has some profile that is given. And then you want to prove, uh, so there is no scaling of the interaction, but you want to prove uh, uh, this in the thermodynamic, I would say, academic thermodynamic limit, the one that we learn in our statistical mechanics course. So this is an open problem. And it's also an open problem, uh, as I said, at zero temperature, actually. So we don't know that the ground, we don't know that the ground state exhibits Bose-Einstein condensation in the thermodynamic limit from a mathematical perspective. But there has been some progress in that direction recently. Uh, okay, so <clears throat> for the last few minutes, I would just like to mention <clears throat> uh, 
also a topic that I've, I've been uh, working on, which is uh, the dynamics. So I would like to look at the um, dynamical Schrodinger equation um, and uh, consider the following situation. So, so given an initial state psi n zero, and usually in our assumptions, we assume that this state, this initial state, it's, it exhibits both Einstein condensation. So it satisfies the definition of BC that I mentioned before. Usually you have to put also on that we have some additional uh, assumptions. And then we, okay, we consider the many body uh, evolution. But now we, we remove the trap, let's say. Okay, so, I would, so with the physical picture we have in mind is that we have a trapped system, which is BEC. I mean, it comes from the experiment. And then you remove the trap in your experiment and you evolve freely, or I mean, not freely, it's interacting, but you remove the trap. So the the, 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 the one body operator is only the Laplacian. And we want to see whether we can effectively describe psi and not psi and t, the many body evolution. So you know that you know that uh, the gross the time dependent gross Pitaisky equation is also a good thing for that. Yeah, okay, I want to prove that. Actually, it has been proven. And uh, I'll mention that on the next slide. But uh, so 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 in which sense we can say is it, in which sense we we, we we want to understand psi n. So there so there is a vocabulary of what we what we want to know. So so one thing is that we can consider the one body reduced density matrix of psi n t. And then we if we know that there is some other one body reduced density matrix which we which is close to the psi n t, then we say that we have an approximation to leading order. So this is in, in, sometimes we say in our slang that approximation of reduced over, over reduced density matrix is to leading order. We say it's, it's approximated, the psi and t is approximated to leading order if it's approximated in the sense of reduced density matrices. Now you could consider an initial state which lives in the Fox space, for example, this side. And then we want to look at the Fox space evolution of that state and we want to find some effective evolution, this, this WT, this curly WT. That describes you this 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 evolution, and then we will say in the Fox space norm. So then we will like, we will say that we have a Fox space approximation, and immediately I would like to say that the results that we develop usually they are for fixed times. So so the way we we look at this problem is we think we want to get a result that gives you convergence of good approximation when n goes to infinity, but when t is fixed. So this is a different situation than in kinetic theory. In kinetic theory, you would couple. I mean, you would look at large times yeah in our case we really look at microscopic times but we look at the at the situation when n goes to infinity moreover in experiment also n is fixed and t goes to infinity yes 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 so so uh, there is still uh, quite a long way to to get to that i mean from the mathematical perspective what do you mean by the fox space approximation all states are in the fox space Yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay. Oh, you can embed each state, you can embed in the Fox space. Okay, it has a fixed number, of course. But you see, uh, uh, our initial state might be just a state with a fixed number of particles n. Okay. Uh -huh. And then you could, and then you could uh, really just, since the many body evolution doesn't change that. Yeah. So it's still an n body state. So this is actually what we call here in this third point, is, and we call it norm approximation. And then we call that we say that we have a we only look at the approximation in the n body Hilbert space. Okay, so we really look at the n body state. We have we, we look for an effective description on the level of the n body Hilbert space, and then in the end we take n to infinity. Okay, so if, if you take the Fox space approximation, then a priori your state is immediately in the whole Fox space. Okay, and then you take the Fox space norm, which is uh, slightly different a priori. Okay, so so uh, and in some sense, if you know, if you have no norm approximation, then you since you can embed your problem in the Fox space, then norm approximation in that sense is slightly stronger, because if you have a result about the Fox space approximation, if your initial state is a Fox space state, you, it does not mean you will get the result about its projection to the n body Hilbert space. That's what I wanted to say. Okay, and and uh, so so. Uh, okay, last few minutes. So 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 this is our theorems that have been proven already some years ago that I wanted to show you. So maybe the 
so, so the terms that people prove in this business or being proving in this business look like that, that you take an initial state, which is BEC condensed. So this is this if, so this is the assumption. So this is exactly about BEC. And then you, then you say that the, now you take the reduced bod, one body reduced density matrix of the fully evolved state, okay, psi n of t, the Schrodinger evolved state. And then you show, oh, that it's still approximated by the projection onto one body state. But this time, this one body state has to be evolved with the Hartree equation. Or if you do it in the scaling when beta is equal to one, the gross pitaeski scaling, then again, this is the only the scaling when you see that there is a scattering length appearing. And then the statement is exactly the same, but the effective equation is the gross pitaeski equation. So you see the same somehow, the same problem that also is in for the ground state energy that you have to take the special peculiar scaling with beta equal to one to see the scattering length of the effective equation and to see the proper gross pitaeski equation. Okay, and, and so this actually, the, the, the study of the dynamics is very, also very old. Uh, it has been, uh, had, uh, had his first result on that in the 70s. And I would say I would, one of the most influential papers was by Spohn, uh, because Spohn introduced the BBGKY hierarchy to this quantum setup. And, uh, and uh, actually those results about the gross pitaeski dynamics that have been obtained by Erdoschlein and Yao in, in, in let's say 15 years ago, they used the BBGKY hierarchy. Okay. And they actually they were very, they had no convergence rate. So, so if you look at this theorem that you see, okay, you could ask how, what are the estimates on that? Oh, sorry, here, here's a zero missing on the right hand side on both, oh, sorry, on both the statements. So this limit is zero and this limit is zero. Okay. But, uh, or, but there are, I mean, you could ask how quickly in terms of T and N this converges. And those methods using BBGKY hierarchy don't give you this rate of convergence. And then people in, understand how to do it to get also rates of convergence. Okay, and just the last thing that so the most recent results on the dynamics is about the norm approximation. I've been working on that, so I wanted to mention that just in the end. So, so if you want to get know, if you want to understand the the uh, the norm approximation for the dynamics, then it turns out you have to also understand the dynamics of the excitations. And just to formulate the theorem, I have to introduce just two things. So, one is what we call the excited Fox space, and this is the ex actually the Excited Fox space is a Fox space which is built not on the whole Fox space, on the whole one body Hilbert space, but it's built on the orthogonal complement of the, of the Hilbert space to a, what we call the, 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 the BEC state. So if you think that, if you, since we know that the BEC is evolved, let's say, with a phi which satisfies the gross pitaeski equation, then to describe the excitations, we, look, we want to look at states which are always orthogonal to that phi. And we build, a, we build a Fox space on this orthogonal complement. And well, then there is a mapping which allows you to map the many body, any many body wave, n body wave function unitarily to a state which is in this excited Fox space, which is which 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 lives on this orthogonal complement to the to, to the to the BEC. And uh, well, basically, it tells you that well, this 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 is a Fox space that can be this is a vector that can be embedded in the Fox space and that describes the evolution of the excitations. Okay, and then you also have to introduce correlations to the system using a time-dependent Bogolyubov transformation. This is still a quadratic theory, and this, here is everything explicit. I don't write. I'm not writing out how this looks like. Km can be computed explicitly in terms of the Solution of the gross pitaeski equation and the and the and the and the uh, scattering equation, but just to formulate the last theorem is that this is the statement that if you have an n-body wave function, initial n-body wave function psi n zero, then its many-body evolution can be approximated by a by an effective theory which consists of a of a of a effective theory that describes the uh, condensate. So this is, let's say, gross pitaeski theory, and the quadratic theory, which describes the correlation between the excited particles. And this is how you, so U2, so T is explicit, U is explicit, T 
key star with time dependent is the one that I mentioned before. So they're all explicit quantities. Uh, and U2 is a generator, is, is a unitary dynamics on the Fox space, which is generated by an explicit quadratic Hamiltonian. Yeah? So, so the point is that you have an n-body state, you map it to a Fox space state by removing the condensate, let's say, and then the excitations which are on the on the, the excitation slip on the excited Fox space, you then evolve them according to unitary dynamics, which are explicit. I don't write them out, they're quite long, but they're explicit. And then you add correlations on top of that using Bogolibov transformation. And then you map it back to your n-body state, okay? And then you show that this is actually, this is the norm in the n-body Hilbert space. Sorry, here should be written n-body Hilbert space HM. So this is how the most recent theorems about the dynamics look like. It may be slightly complicated, but the, but the bottom line is the following. You have an evolution which is described in terms of a nonlinear equation that describes the, con the condensate, and the Bogolubov time dependent Bogolubov dynamics which describe the evolution of the excitations. And uh, altogether, this gives you a norm approximation to the evolution of the full n body state. Okay, thank you very much. And that's all I wanted to say. Okay, let's thank the speaker. Uh, and uh, it's time for questions. We had quite many questions during the talk, but uh, if someone wants to ask, could I still ask one? Yes, please. Okay, uh, just at the beginning, when I mentioned that somehow the realistic interaction between the atoms is not purely repulsive, uh, then you said that you will remark on this situation, which is more physical. And of course, the most important physical aspect of, of two body interaction is that it has a minimum and has bound state. In other words, there are molecules. So the system of such bosons with truly realistic potential would have a ground state, which is a piece of solid, it's not a DC. And uh, you mentioned that there are nevertheless some uh, more or less rigorous results for such slightly more realistic situation. Could you elaborate? Okay, so, 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 uh, so, so uh, the formation of molecules uh, in, so, so, so I would say the, so, so, so the formation of molecules uh, is something so there is a, so so this is completely out of uh, my field of expertise i know that there are results about the formation of molecules in the ground state i mean the, the i would say as i say even more if you really have a multiparticle um, situation with such a realistic potential then the true physical mathematical and whatever ground state is a piece of solid not even a collection of molecules no, but I, I mean, okay, but uh, so you say that if you do an experiment of the, on the BEC, yeah, I mean, you, you produce BEC, yes, I mean, you have a BEC yes. in your lab, so, so uh, your claim is, I mean, so I mean, our, so you look, you look, look, no, look, look, no, look, 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 look. The assumption about the repulsive interactions does, is, is not a good one. Yeah. So you see that in the lab you see molecules. Yeah, that's your point. Yeah, well, not only you see molecules, but you you also see so-called free body recombinations. So uh, produ production of molecules depends on the third body, but that's another story. The point is that this process of gluing, so to say, together, puts a limit on the available densities of gas that can actually display BEC. If the density is too high, then you cannot reach the BEC. Precisely because of this um, potential that, that bounds atoms together. Okay, I, I fully agree. But on the other hand, I would say I would, so, uh, so okay, so uh, as far as, um, so what I wanted to say about attractive interaction is the following. So. So the ground state energy asymptotics in terms of the gross Pitayevsky functional, okay, that I mentioned. Yes. This theorem has been also proven for interactions which have negative part, etc. So, so, but so, then it cannot. But then it cannot possibly uh, describe the the ground state. There must be some additional condition somehow that you are I don't know in the orthogonal subspace or something. 
because no, I mean, it, I mean it, 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 doesn't tell, it tells you something about the number, which is the ground state the energy. Rubidium is a metal. If you really cool this rubidium further, it will stay as a piece of metal. Okay, but so okay, so so I I would say the following. So so the theorem. So maybe the model is just not. I mean. Okay, so for the two body for a model with two body interactions in an external trap, if you have some assumptions on the under the assumptions on the external trap, and there are also results with no no need of repulsive interaction. So there might be a part which is, but it cannot be too negative. Okay, but in other words, it should not support the bounds. It, it might be that this is actually the okay, so. Maybe those, maybe the physical meaning of this restrictions on the negative part are that they cannot form an additional bound state. That's true. okay. Then, then maybe was, so. Uh, I, I'm not. I'm not clear because since I'm so uh, since these are not my results, I, I don't remember exactly the the precise restrictions on the negative part. But uh, there are some restrictions. Okay. But, yeah. And also for the dynamics, for example. So so for the dynamics. Uh, for the problem, for example, with the gross pitayevsky equation with a attractive gross pitayevsky equation is in three dimension is that it's not globally well posed. So in the sense that it can blow up. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is also the reason why we don't have results about a derivation of the gross pitayevsky equation for attractive interactions in the situation when, when in three dimensions when there is attraction, attraction between the, the, the particles. But there are results about the one dimensional or two dimensional situation where you can get, add attraction in the interaction, not too much. Also, this is related to the fact that it cannot be, well, to make the effective equation well posed, basically, the one and two dimensional Hartree equation thing of that. And then there are also some results about the, 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 the effective dynamics for if there is some attraction in low dimensional okay. systems. Okay, so we have one more question from. Kshu. May I ask a question? Yeah. At the beginning, you mentioned that there are no analytic solutions. Well, there is the case of harmonic forces. Are, is this case completely useless for these mathematical? Uh, so I mean, uh, you, you, so you, uh, you say that for the many body problem, there yeah. are some, there. Are, okay, so so first of all, there is also not completely true because uh, there is so there are integrable models, of course. Yeah, one dimensional. One dimensional. So no, no, but, it, but harmonic harmonic forces in three dimensions are soluble, exactly. Of course. Uh, okay, so you you see, so maybe so my statement was imprecise. For general for general interactions, we don't have explicit uh -huh. formulas. Yeah? Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, so usually the so we never think of so. When you consider many body harmonic systems in this mathematical business, then of course you always want to consider Coulomb forces, let's say. So in the harmonic case, you know why you want to consider very specific interactions. But uh, when we when the, in this bosonic site, then usually we want to have results about very general W because we don't know ex explicit structure. My second question is: Are there any? Results concerning photons. No, that's uh, you, you. So you would like to have a. Uh, so so what kind of system you would like to to, to consider in an external? Well, field? of of course, in the laboratory that may be very hard to envision. But from cosmological considerations, one may consider uh, condensation of photons uh, in the presence of gravitational forces. So, uh, so I do, I'm not aware of any of those results. Uh, I would say that, but this is of course, uh, it's not about photons really, but there are some papers where actually people consider the one body, the, the, the kinetic part, which is let's say quasi-relativistic. Yeah, so you have a square root of the Laplacian, things like that. But usually, and I think they are usually they are massive. So I maybe I, I'm not sure about that whether there there is a mass term or usually I think there is a mass term to be honest in that square root. So you no, know, this is like square root of minus Laplacian plus m squared, something like that. 
So semi-relativistic models, they are considered. Yeah, I think there are there are some results about, and actually I think there is exactly the, because there is, because so there are results about that in the context of the stability of 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 some uh, of some uh, 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 sorry, how do you call it? Uh, of some it's the, uh, systems in astronomy. So so there is this. There's this Chandra Sakar limit that's been also considered in the in the in this literature. So exactly with gravitational forces. Yeah. So so, so there are, there are results about that. Uh, if you want, I can I can give you the precise references later. I need to check that. And Krzysztof also wanted to uh, before. Yes. But well, in fact, I have many questions, but uh, time is running out. So I don't know. Maybe we should finish and then. Okay, we can finish and then I can, we can stay and discuss later. Right? I have to take part also in some meetings. So. Okay. But I will send you an email. Okay. Okay, sure. I'll be happy to. Maybe we set some short meeting in this room. Okay. Right. Okay, so let's thank uh, Martin once again for a very thank you. Nice thank you very much for the invitation.